world! In today's video, we are going to look at the differences between the CISC and RISC processors. Now, rather than directly pointing out the differences between these two architectures, we'll look at a series of factors that led to the evolution of computer architecture in general. But before we approach this topic in depth, let's understand what exactly is a processor. A processor is basically nothing but the brain or the computing part of the computer. It takes instructions and data as inputs. The instructions tell the processor what is it supposed to do with the data. This is nothing but manipulation of the data. Each processor has an instruction set. This is nothing but a collection of instructions or operations that can be performed by the processor. Computer architecture can be classified into two types based on the instruction sets. First is CISC, which stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. And another is RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Now I want you to forget both these terms, as now we'll have a look at a series of factors that influenced the formation of both these architectures. And for that, let's go back in time. Before 1970, the memory, or RAM, was slow and expensive. And the programs were often written in high-level languages, as obviously they were more user-friendly. It was a job of the compiler to convert these HLL instructions into their lower-level counterparts for execution by a processor. With increase in the complexity of high-level languages, designing a compiler became a tricky, error-prone, and a tedious task. To make it easier, there was a need to bridge the gap between HLLs and computer architecture. Thus, it made absolute sense to have compact, low-level instructions. These instructions not only occupied less space in memory, but they also simplified the task of designing a compiler. Let's have a quick look at one such instruction. Now, simply by typing this one command, multiple things are taken care of. Firstly, the numbers from the specified memory locations are fetched. Then they are loaded implicitly into two separate registers. And then multiplication is performed. Finally, the result is stored in the appropriate memory location. It is clearly evident that compact instructions allow you to get more done with less. However, to support such instructions, the silicon or the hardware underneath had to take the burden of execution, which made it complex. The idea here was to move all the complexity to the hardware and make the software less demanding. As the processor started supporting more and more diverse instructions, the processor designs started getting more and more complicated. Also, more silicon was getting utilized to support these instructions which resulted in large and expensive processors. High level of complexity also resulted in increased power consumption and heat dissipation. Please note that the computer architects didn't explicitly set out to create complex instruction set computers. Instead, they naturally evolved due to the conditions existing at that time. Interestingly, the term CISC was coined quite later when the idea of RISC or reduced instruction set computers came into picture. Now let's move into early 1980s. It was discovered that 20% of the instructions were used 80% of the time in any given program, which means many complex instructions of CISC architecture were not being used. This realization led to a rethinking of the processor design. It made more sense to have an instruction set consisting of simple and only the most commonly used instructions. That's how RISC or Reduced Instruction Set Computer Architecture was conceptualized. And the former architecture was referred to as CISC or Complex Instruction Set Computer as the overall processor design and instructions appeared complex in comparison with this architecture. CISC based computers have many instructions. And by many, I mean they can typically occupy almost 1,200 pages. However, RISC-based computers have a reduced number of instructions, usually less than 100. Simple and less number of instructions made even the hardware less complicated. 
The idea here was to take away the complexity from the hardware by putting more emphasis on the language compiler. This reduction didn't mean that the program had fewer instructions. On the contrary, the same task which a CISC completed in one instruction took more than one instruction in RISC. However, RISC-based instructions are simpler and generally of the same length. Thus, they need only a few short clock cycles for completion, which results in faster execution speeds. As each instruction takes more or less the same time for execution, it is also possible to implement pipelining. In case of pipelining, when one instruction is being executed, next instruction is being decoded, and the third one is being fetched all in one clock cycle. This results in improved processor performance. Let's have a quick look at one example of RISC-based instruction. Let's look at multiplication in RISC. So these are the commands that are required. Here, load gets the data from the specified memory location into a register. Prod finds the product of the two operands, and store command finally moves the result into the specified memory location. In case of CISC, the data was moved to and from the memory implicitly. However, in case of RISC, one has to load and store the operands explicitly by using load and store commands. One can easily observe that although the instructions are simple in format, you need more than one instruction as compared to CISC to get the desired result. Thus, you need more memory or RAM to store these instructions. Since 1980, the main memory capacity was increasing and costs were decreasing rapidly all thanks to Moore's law. Thus, memory wasn't a concern anymore. Also, the RISC-based compilers produced highly optimized code with smaller memory footprints, which resulted in even better performance. Now, CISC needed a large number of transistors to support complex instructions. But we know that with reduced instructions of RISC, the hardware was simpler to implement. So, one may wonder, that what happened to these saved transistors? Well, these were then used to increase the number of registers, cache, and other units like math coprocessors. With increase in the number of general purpose registers, there is no need for the processor to access the main memory frequently. Most of the instructions in CISC access the main memory, which not only results in slower speeds, but many complicated addressing modes as well. In case of RISC, Variables which are used frequently are kept in the registers for fast access. Thus, most of the instructions work on the registers only. Due to this, most of the RISC instructions get executed in a single cycle and you don't even have many complicated addressing modes. All you need are load and store commands to access the memory and the operand is retained in the register unless another one is loaded in its place. Let's have a look at the performance equation. This equation clearly indicates the major point of difference between CISC and RISC architecture. The emphasis in case of CISC is on keeping the instruction count low for a program, which increases the overall complexity of an instruction and results in higher CPI. And in case of RISC, the emphasis is on minimizing the CPI, usually to a single clock cycle, which makes the instructions simple but increases their overall count in a program. Now, in case of embedded systems applications, risk is preferred if you want to keep the power consumption low, because due to simpler hardware of risk, you get low power consumption, thus it'll be more useful in battery-powered devices. And CISC would be an appropriate choice if there is a shortage of code space. So these are some of the examples of CISC processors. You have Motorola 68K, then there is obviously x86 from Intel and AMD. And basically CISC processors dominate in PC and data center servers market. These are some of the example of RISC architecture. You've got Sun's Spark, MIPS architecture. There is obviously ARM processors from Apple and Qualcomm. These are used in tablets and smartphones. So basically, RISC dominates in mobile devices market and for embedded systems devices, usually for lower power consumption. So, is this the end of the video? <laughs> Not yet. We looked at the whole journey of how things evolved from CISC to RISC. So do you think that RISC versus CISC is still a thing? 
Well, turns out that most modern processors don't belong completely to either type. The Intel Pentium Pro, for example, uses complex instructions which are internally broken down into simple, risk-like instructions. Thus, it is more like a RISC processor which runs CISC instructions. Even in case of modern x86, the instruction decoders break down CISC instructions into RISC-like operations, which are finally fed to the processor for execution. RISC processors have also started adopting many CISC-like features. For example, many modern RISC processors have started implementing complex instructions for providing additional functionalities. Thus, modern processors are more like hybrid of RISC and CISC as they implement best features of both the architectures. So that is it for today. Like and share the video and subscribe to the channel for more such amazing content. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye world.